this is Coach Poe, and I wanted to, to provide somewhat of a part to, to the last video that I posted, why players don't get recruited. If you watched that last video, this visual should look familiar to you. If you haven't watched the video, you can actually, I'm going to have a link to it right below this video. Um, this video right here is titled A Secret to Becoming Recruitable a secret to becoming recruitable and like i'm saying it's like i said it is a part two to the video that's linked why players don't get recruited and just to give you a quick recap of that last video this is the visual that we use this stands for middle school and this is your high school grades 9th 10th 11th 12th grade um, and i talked about how the different levels of middle school to high school how that is a there's a requirement a skill requirement difference when it comes from middle school to high school. This graph shows the middle school level. This graph shows the, where, where you get to at the ninth grade level at high school. And this showed how most players, the average player stays at the same level when they, their skill set remains the same when they get to high school. This part of the, the graph or the visual, we call that the no offer zone. Offers come into play when you get to this dotted line, which is the offers, when offers come into play. And we, I wanted to keep this visual simple. And we said the offers come into play at this level, which is JUCO offers. This right here, we didn't really discuss, but above, at this line and above is the offer zone. I talked about how Power 5, this is how, where Power 5 is. Everybody want to go Power 5, but this is where your skill set has to be to reach, to get a power five offer, to get power five interest, to get power five offers. But this is the offers zone. This is the offer zones. And so basically in that video, I talked about four things that's needed to at least get to right here, to at least get to the JUCO level and start getting offers and start getting interest from at least the JUCO level. Okay, and I kept, I kept it simple. I kept that video simple. And basically talked about JUCO, Power 5. But in here is the offer zones where you can start talking about mid-majors and low-majors and all the other different levels that you have. That is in this zone. So I want to share this with you. I was in IT for 20 years. And I'm going to be extremely transparent right now. I was in IT for 20 years and I was an average IT employee. I'm just being transparent. I was an average IT employee. And so because I was an average IT employee, I, I did not receive not one promotion in IT. Not one promotion because, the, because of this one thing that I'm going to share with you today, the secret, a secret to helping you become recruitable. So when I changed careers and went into college coaching, I said, hey, there has to be a change. I don't want to be an average college coach. I made that mistake in IT. I'm not going to make that mistake as a college coach. So I implement, implemented something. I remembered what I did in middle school, in high school, and in college. I implemented that because I was extremely successful. I was extremely successful academically in middle school, high school and college because of this one secret okay so and i say middle school when i was in school middle school was actually junior high school okay so junior high school was seven eighth ninth grade ninth graders were in junior high school 10th 10th 11th 12th graders were considered high school that was the high school age group so in ninth grade i finished with the number one gpa OK, I finished ninth grade with the number one GPA, the highest GPA of all the ninth graders. All right. I graduated high school. Number two in the class salutatorian. I was actually co-salutatorian with one of my teammates, high school basketball teammates. OK, I graduated college top 10 percent in the, in the business school because of this one thing that I did. Um, in middle school, high school, and college academically. Okay, 
I implemented, so the same thing that I did academically, middle school, high school, college, I decided to do when I became a college coach. I forgot about it when I was in IT. <laughs> I forgot about it and I was just average. When I got became a college coach, I got a, after my first year as a college coach, I got a raise based on performance. I had never gotten a raise based on performance. I'm being totally transparent. I have never gotten a raise based on performance as an IT professional. Within my first year as a college coach, I got a raise after that first year because of performance. You have no idea how that felt, how proud I was of myself. Just, I was, I was just super proud of myself. I, 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 it was just, it meant a lot to me to do that, to, to accomplish that. And so basically as a college coach, I'm, I'm going to, basically I'm going to tell you what I did in a minute, because what I want you to see, what I want, what the secret that I'm about to share with you is going to help you. You're not going to stay at one level like the average high school basketball player to do. What you're going to do with this one secret, what you're going to do is, and I talked about this, let me go back to what I talked about in that last video. Because middle school, first of all, you got to make the high school team. Making a high school team requires a different level. High school, middle school and high school is a different skill set. Um, it's a different IQ level. It's a different speed. Um, you're going into a program that have a different system than what you had in middle school. Okay. So it's going to, you're pushed to the next level. Also, you're pushed to the next level to your, the level that your coach needs you to be at. You're pushed to that level. Also, that's going to be the requirement to get you there. Okay. First, you got to make the team and then the coach is going to push you to a certain level. Okay. So now we want to talk about how do you go from here being an average high school player to now each summer or each year you're increasing your skill set okay you're increasing your skill set you're increasing your statistics you're increasing your playing ability all right that's what this secret is going to do and make you recruitable okay what that secret is setting goals <laughs> it's that simple setting goals changed things for me setting goals is the reason why i finished number one in the class academically as a ninth grader i graduated number two co-salutatorian with one of my high school teammates in high school and i was in the top 10 percent of the class in the business school basically so with that being said i'm gonna be honest with you I was not trying to accomplish any of that. I was not trying to finish number one in the class as a ninth grader. I was not trying to finish in the top 10% of high, it, number two in high school. And I was not trying to finish top 10%. Okay. So let's talk about this. So how I broke it down academically and how I broke it down as a college coach, I said, I broke my goals down. Your overall goal is to get a college basketball scholarship. When you enter high school as a ninth grader, that is four years away. That is four years away. So what I did academically, my goal was broken down into smaller goals or short-term goals. We'll say short-term goals. The long-term goal is to get a scholarship. The short-term goal that I set academically was to have a certain GPA each grading period. That's the secret. My goal was to have at least a 3.5 every grading period. Now, granted, I did way over that, but my goal was to make a three over a 3.5 every grading period. So now, how does that apply to what you're trying to accomplish? <clears throat> so I mentioned earlier, the overall goal, the long-term goal is a scholarship. But what you have to do, the secret is to set yearly goals. That's the secret. 
And you can actually start setting that yearly goal coming out of middle school. You can set that yearly goal your ninth grade year for your ninth grade year. Once you set that yearly goal at the end of your ninth grade season, it's time to set a new goal. It's time to look at, look at your strengths, look at your weaknesses, and then it's time to set a new goal. Look at what you accomplished, and then it's time to set a new goal. Okay? Every year, that's what you want to do. Set a yearly goal. You can get, you can get with your coach and do that. Set a yearly goal. Then look at what you have done at the end of the season, <clears throat> what you did well at, what you struggled in, and then it's time to decide, okay, well, what's going to be my goal going into the next year? Okay, I'm going to end it right there. I'm going to stop right there. So basically the secret is to set short-term goals. That's the secret to set short-term goals so you don't start, stay average and keep your skill set right there in the no offer zone. No, you're trying to get your skill set. You're trying to get to the level. You're trying to cross this offer zone. And it's going to require you to set goals each year so you can start going up each year. All right, that's it.